Greetings fellow Wastelanders and welcome to my Grey Garden Settlement Tour. This build was created on the PlayStation 5 using the Fallout 4 Game of the Year Edition including all DLCs but no building mods. I do however have Creation Club skins installed for power armor, clothing, and weapons. One of the first things I consider whenever building a settlement is where the attacks will come from. Attacks from raiders, super mutants, gunners, and more are inevitable, so planning around them often helps to center me when planning out a build. In the case of Grey Garden, attacks tend to come from further up this hill, so it was here I decided to build a security tower. The supporting structures for this tower are made from shack foundations and scaffolding pieces. I then either snapped or glitched in walls. Glitching in walls into a structure can be done simply by using a rug and group selecting the wall, or in other cases, using the combination campfire and pillar glitch. Both techniques were used in creating this tower. The first level of this tower has a set of turrets in front of it, and then a clinic to the side in case anyone needs medical attention as they enter the settlement, or for those settlers who get hurt defending Grey Garden. Head on up, and we have the living quarters for the doctor. I accidentally skipped over the top of the tower, which is where I had placed a guard post. Oddly, guards never actually go up there, despite there being stairs that lead right up to it. I suspect this is some weird pathing glitch. Grey Garden is a settlement run by robots, and over the centuries, they have carefully tended to the plants at the settlement. Part of that care involves a greenhouse that comes with the settlement. You cannot scrap it without mods, so I had to work with it. In the front, I built up this scaffolding structure for turrets. This also creates a small structure to cover up storage and the doghouse underneath. Inside, I added bags of fertilizer, a steel drum from outside, and plants from the decoration section, all to fill out the interior more. I also installed cycling lights along the edge and put them into different color settings to simulate artificial growing lights. Out back, I glitched in a wood prefab structure for the settlement's Brahmin. The Brahmin is not fenced in, so it can wander around the settlement as it wishes, but if it is raining or the sun's too hot in the sky or something, it can come here for cover and get a bite to eat. Next to the Brahmin is an outhouse for the settlers to use. It also includes a washing station next door for settlers to clean up. Circling around, we have a maintenance shed. I always love having a scavenger station set up at my settlements, and this shed is built around it. The scavenger station animation is really cool when the person gets down next to the structure and starts welding, and then of course the scavenger will also patrol around the settlement like a guard, so you kind of get two for one.
Next up, we have one of the largest structures in the settlement, the Mind Over Motor Garage. When you first come to the settlement, there is old equipment and scrap around the settlement workshop. I decided to build this garage around this machinery, and the result was a two-story structure. Outside, I set up a small barbecue area for settlers to prepare food. The first floor is the actual garage. Here, we have a power armor station, a robot workbench, weapons workbench, and an armor workbench. The robot and power armor parts in the back storage area are collected from Rust Devil armor and Raider power armor. Many of the items you see here came with the settlement, such as the Mr. Handy boxes and the ladder. You can scrap some of these items, but they're pretty unique and you can't recreate them without bods, so I left them alone. Upstairs are the living quarters for many of the settlers. I wanted a big, wide open communal type space. There are living room areas with sleeping bags glitched into the couches and seats for settlers to relax. This locker area is meant for settlers to change before or after they take a bath. For those wondering, the mirror in the bathroom is actually a poster from the Galactic Zone Nuka World build menu reversed and campfire pillar glitched into place on the wall. Full credit goes to the school zone for that particular trick. Next door is the kitchen with everything you need to feed your settlers. There's a breakfast bar as well as a small dining section. Notice that part of the dining section is actually set at an angle, which is part of my philosophy of trying to make buildings as non-boxy as possible.
As we exit the garage, we see a patio area, and below that, a guard post to keep watch over the railroad track bridge that leads right into the sun. If you've seen my builds before, you know I love using the traveling caravan trader post. I always build additional items near the post for caravan guards and the traders to interact with, and it adds a ton of life to the settlement, as you can see by all the movement and activity happening here. At the base of the garage building is the generator for the first level of the settlement. It is surrounded by a scaffolding frame with junk walls and fences glitched in to protect it. Now, let's turn our eyes upward. Here at Grey Garden, you can build on the overpass, but you have to get up there. To do this, I set up a chain of two four-floor elevators that take you all the way up to the top. You could build on the lower level of the overpass, but for me, there was just way too much junk there that you can't scrap to make it worthwhile. And here we are at the top of the overpass. The build borders of the settlement keep you confined to this relatively small area, so I tried to make the most of it. There is a guard post here to help keep the peace, along with a restaurant bar and shops. Red Zeppelin is the Grey Garden bar restaurant, and outside Red Zeppelin are the facilities for people to go to the bathroom and a sink to wash up before they go in and eat. When building this structure, I wanted to do something a little bit different, so both levels actually are at different heights. 
The first level mostly uses walls from the wood and metal section, but I also integrated glass walls from the warehouse section to let light in and provide a beautiful view. In order to do this, I had to use the old campfire pillar glitch to set the height at the same level as the other walls. Floors and foundations of this structure are mostly the wood shack foundations, so I wanted to add some texture to the floors. To that end, I campfire slash pillar glitch smaller floor panels in to give the floor a patched up look. Behind the bar is a small chef's table area where settlers or visitors who pay extra caps can get personalized service from the waitstaff and enjoy a beautiful view with their meal. So damn hungry. Maybe I'll get another drink. Upstairs is a combination working and living area. As we walk through this floor, you'll see a bit more of the floor patching I did on the first level. I wanted this floor to look bigger and more open, so the walls are mostly from the barn and no warehouse color. sections. There is a height difference between the balcony walls from the wood section and the warehouse and barn walls, so I had to patch the upper parts with fences from the wood section to fill in the gaps. The weights in the workout area came from Madden's gym near Pickman's gallery. For fun, I used the weapon stand here as a weight rack. When you arrive at the overpass, there is a large truck with containers on the back that you cannot scrap without mods. That is where I decided to put the junk and clothing shops. However, 
I had to create a weird building around the truck to do so. I started by laying out a foundation of scaffolding frames at the bottom and then built upwards from there. Junkion Goods is named after the planet of junk from Transformers lore. Outside, we have the patio area. The shop itself is not huge, but it has one heck of a view. All those magazines you see on the rack are duplicated using the manufacturing duplication glitch. And yes, all these junk items on these shelves were placed there by hand, one by one. Upstairs, we have by-the-way clothing. As is my want, I like to use different shapes, hence the rounded metal prefab combined with the balcony pieces from the wood section forming this shop. This shop has both a clothing vendor as well as a salon. And that is my tour of Grey Garden. If you are interested in a nighttime tour of the settlement, there is a short bonus video after this outro. Otherwise, I thank you for joining me. I have linked to instructional videos on the techniques used in this build by YouTubers such as The Schooled Zone and The Insane Shekelador in the description below for your reference. Likes and kind comments are always appreciated, and if you like what I do on this channel, please subscribe. As always, stay safe out there in the wasteland.